Okay, what you're looking at, this thing which looks like um, a cow pat wrapped in plastic, is one of the weirdest things I have explored in the world of tea. Yes, it is tea. It's called a pure tea. And this is about 375 grams of it, so it's going to last me a long time. And I just tried some. I don't know whether you can see the um, texture of it all there, but it's all sort of woody and black and compressed and dark with bits of yellowy, yet reddy sort of like stuff thrown in there. Anyway, I'm showing you this because this is the first time I have ever uh, explored this particular variety of tea. And I found this website which sells all kinds of like cheap crap from China. So I bought this rather touristy Chinese tea set. So I could actually explore um, Chinese tea drinking properly with a proper pure type of Chinese tea. This is called the Gai Wan, which just basically means a cup with a lid, because it's a cup, it's got a lid that's used instead of a teapot, okay? The cups themselves, which came with the set, are bloody tiny, as you can see. I mean, um, it's only about, the depth is only about twice the width of my thumb. And these things are pretty small, but I can, if you think about the size of my sweetener pack there, you know, you can see it's pretty small. And so this stuff, you know, this is just pointing out that the Chinese seem to drink their tea a bit like wine. You know, you sit there, you sip it, you explore the flavor, and you get used to it and see how it goes. And it came with this dinky little funnel with a filter on the bottom, which you shove over your pouring jug. And then you find a way, hopefully without burning your fingers, of tipping your tea from the lidded cup into the serving pitcher or fairness pitcher, and then from then you can pour it in bit by bit into your cups. Now this tea was so strange in flavor to my British tastes that yes I did have to sweeten it. It's not like, you know, our standard impression of a Chinese tea is very light, very sort of ethereal, very green, very, oh, you know, it tastes almost like the feeling of a Zen garden, all right? This stuff, on the other hand, tasted like a combination between a fireplace and a Welsh chewing tobacco, a Welsh miner's chewing tobacco. It was a very, very, very strong, very, very rich. And as I went through numerous steepings, because the reason that you brew in such small quantities so you can do lots of little steepings, and experience the change in flavor through all those steepings, which is why I'm so curious about this one particular method, is it, you know it, it like it started off with this like really powerful boom kick ass um, tar like fireplace you know um, wood smoke uh, leaves all that kind of stuff and it slowly progressed into this more sort of like mellow golden kind of like autumnal warm friendly flavors but it took so many steepings to get there it was incredible so this stuff has like changed my understanding of tea I mean tea is something that I just love anyway. I like the idea of just like drinking something which has a different flavor and different effect every single way you make it. But this stuff, it even looks a bit like a strange variety of chewing tobacco. It's like black and mm, the smell of it. Oh, it still smells that kind of like, um, you know, fireplace deep dark richness. This is a uh, one out of many varieties of pure tea and it is in fact 35 years old. And I bought it from China, and I wanted to have this one because I wanted to have a flavor that would be autumnal during the autumn stroke fall type season. And I wanted to get this dirt cheap system so that I could try and brew in the traditional way. Bad thing about this is you're quite likely to burn your fingers. So I've taken a bit of like um, folded up tissue paper and placed that as a cushion for my finger for when I'm pouring the tea into the serving jug. But it's a very different way of doing things. Uh, this is supposed to be a what's called a gong fu tea set. The words gong fu means making, which means the application of efforts, uh, basically kind of like mindfulness kind of thing. And so the idea is that you can put more effort into the process and treat the whole uh, ritual of tea making in a much more mindful way. And apparently, say some people and some websites and so on and so forth, which might be true or might not. But this method of Gaiwan serving pitcher, tiny titchy little cups and um, filter type funnel-y thing 
uh, is the method which is preferred for tea tasters in uh, the West and in the East. Although the method, I mean, there's like the quantity and quality of rituals out there associated with drinking tea on a worldwide basis is just like quite a lot. It's different in Japan, it's different when making matcha tea, uh, you know, it's oh, crazy. But either way, I just wanted to just point out that do not just think that tea is tea. It most certainly is not. This experience has basically blown my mind as to the variety and depth of flavors. All right. I mean, I was just sitting here and I was just drinking this stuff, thinking like I am drinking a fireplace right now. I have the flavor of the wood. I've got the flavor of all the um, you know, the embers and the burning and the sparks and the smoke and the oh, I, I'm I'm drinking a fireplace. Okay, I, you know, and I can taste this like tarry kind of like flavor, and it also like change with the various steepings become mellow and redder and warmer and ooh, uh, fruity and weird. And it wasn't, you know. Chinesey light green meditational fr you know fra fragrance uh, kind of like weird stuff you know it, it wasn't that sort of like light oh this is the expression of what it means to be China we are all very spiritual uh, dragon people yes no no it's more a question of um, the British chewing tobacco you know this kind of like um, people covered in hair and tattoos going down into a mine type flavor this is like scary this is like a bodybuilders like kicking the crap out of each other kind of flavor this was like uh you know an in your face big scary flavor it was it was amazing it was just like mm, uh, it's the kind of thing that you know you, I, i'm never going to be able to look at the word tea and just think oh that nice stuff that we have early in the morning you can't have this shit early in the morning all right, it would be like listening to Iron Maiden as your ringtone at top volume while someone's offering you a spliff simultaneously. All right, you know, it just, it's, you don't do that first thing in the morning before work. So you can't have this stuff in the morning before work. This is like afternoon or early evening kind of like, yeah, I need a bit of a lift, but I also want to experience something which is going to kick me in the balls. I mean without the sweeteners it would be a bit too much for me seriously flavor wise but I did still enjoy the experience and it was really rather peculiar and yes I do believe it does contain some caffeine so I'm probably talking a bit too much so I'm gonna sign out now before my head explodes. Hmm Chinese tea not necessarily meditational but still powerful.